Hey, Richard Miller here uh, again from Facts for Working People. I wanted to make a couple of points about this hullabaloo around the Indiana plant and Trump and his comments about workers. So he attacked the leader of that union in Indiana that represents the workers at Carrier, uh, the USWA, uh, the steel workers. And uh, he, he, his answer to the, he, he complained that the union, the union was do, no good. If, if they were better, they'd, they'd, they wouldn't have been, the jobs wouldn't have been threatened. And they need to do more working and less talking is what Trump said. This is the example of how Trump will deal with us. He wants more work out of us. And uh, incidentally, he says he's going to negotiate with uh, Boeing also to reduce costs. Well, we know what's going to happen there. That a couple of years ago, after getting about $7 billion in subsidies, the company threatened to move to the southern states for cheaper labor. <clears throat> the, the workers rejected the contract. Uh, 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 that, that's economic terrorism, these threats that they use all the time to uh, leave. And of course, after this deal here, they'll, they'll, any company will say that they, 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 they'll leave because that's the right of capitalists to move their capital in a capitalist society, <clears throat> a right we have to take away from them. And uh, um, they'll just do it all the time. But uh, the thing, the thing is, while Trump is a is a savage, uh, 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 horrible individual, he's going to savage workers. Uh, uh, the trade union leadership have opened the doors to this. Uh, they open the doors to this sort of attack. Many workers will f will have sympathy with the attack on the union leadership in this way. And. Um, also, I see Larry Cohen, who was former leader of CWA, is attacking Trump. I think it was Cohen, uh, or it was maybe the uh, yeah, yeah. I think it was Cohen. Um, oh no, it was the it was the working families, the AFL CIO, for using the term union boss to link linking them to the bosses. But a lot of workers will sympathise with that because of the failure of the union leadership to provide a better life. And I want to stress something we say. We've said on this blog many times is that the prominent, the dominant reason the, for the rise of Trump has been the failure of the trade union leadership to provide an alternative. For years, they've been cooperating with the bosses in one way or another, forcing concessionary contracts on their members. So they've opened this door. With, with, had they provided years ago, had they offered an alternative, had they waged a fight back, had they mobilized their membership, had they challenged this offensive of capital, had they built an independent political party, an alternative to the two Wall Street parties, that we would be in a different situation. They bear that responsibility. So what I wanted to add with a couple of things was, um, what is the reason for this? You'll hear often rank and file workers will say they're in bed with the boss, they, they're corrupt, they steal, they're offering, they get bribes, these sort of things. But, but, um, but that's not what the issue is. We've stressed on this blog how it's the, the issue of the team concept. A lot of workers don't understand that term, but they, they know some of the terms uh, that, that are used to describe the team concept in the workplace. Interest-based bargaining. Uh, management labor committees, uh, values committees, workplace values, where you all get together like they're doing at my former workplace. It's all to undermine the union, undermine the workers' power on the job. Um, there's another quality of life circles. All of these are the idea that the bosses and workers have the same interests and we must work together. We must help our boss in the private sector undermine his competitor in the market and we join with him in order to make his profits and have it help him or her um, uh, maintain market share or even dry their rivals, uh, drive them out of the market altogether. Of course, it's impossible to, to build unity with other workers, to build a generalized movement in that way, because we're competing then with other workers for who can work cheaper, uh, more efficiently, which means without uh, weakening unions, weakening safety regulations, and without regulations at all. So it's a disaster for workers. Politically, the, um, the team concept has its... Um, has it expresses itself in support for the Democratic Party, and so we we we, we it's the same old thing. This this leader in the of the United Steelworkers in um, in Indiana, he said, you know, he held his nose and went and voted for Hillary. Well, that's we've been doing that for thirty or forty years, voting for people like that. It's why workers have given up on it altogether. But so so um, the trade union leadership have opened the door uh, to this. Also, so for us. For me in particular, and I think there are others on, uh, that agree with me in the blog and around around the blog, 
um, the, 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 this blog, Facts for Working People, is that they, yes, they're corrupt, but they're, they're ideologically corrupt. They see the world, they have the same worldview as the boss. And if they have the same worldview as the boss, they see their role as trying to help and make capitalism work. And you see now they've come in to defend this guy, uh, Chuck Jones is his name, Trumker of the, the, the AFL, president of the AFL, says, Jones is a man of passion, conviction and integrity. He would do anything for his union brothers and sisters. He's a hero. Um... Uh, um, he, he then goes on Trump does Trump will occupy the White House's words and actions to need to be, befit that office well I don't have any respect for that office who has respect for that office uh, they, they're not, they're not, they don't represent me there's no industrial workers in, 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 the, in the leadership positions they, they, they represent bankers and billionaires and they represent uh, capitalism uh, so I don't have any uh, uh, expect anything different from these people and that's the problem they continue to um, argue that they expect different things from these people and workers know better they're not getting we're getting the same old stuff and so then then he talks about um, they, he gets upset that, uh, about using the term union boss now so um, if you take uh, uh, Larry Cohen has come in Larry Cohen is the um, former head of the CWA communication workers of America uh, he he uh, he's come in now and weighed in on the attack on um, on uh, on Chuck Jones, the steelworkers president in Indiana. You see, they're getting a little worried because of this drive. If you take Wisconsin, when they went after them in Wisconsin, there were only two demands the Labour leadership put forward. Two of them that affected them: one, the right to bargain, and the other, the right to collect dues. The bosses collect dues for them, saves them some work, and they come in on payroll. Dues check off, they call it. It's not good. And, but those were the two major issues. The concessions on their members, no problem. But please let us negotiate them. And Larry Cohen's come in, and the, the, the Labour leadership in general are getting a, a little concerned. He, he, of course, he calls this guy a working class hero. I don't know enough about Ch Chuck Jones, but most workers these days don't think that they're the big Labour leaders or, 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 or even the smaller local Labour leaders are working class heroes. Uh, not necessarily because there's any corruption, or, but because they simply don't produce the goods anymore. Um, so he, he goes on to talk. Uh, uh, Cohen uh, talks about how um, uh, what a no, how what a no good uh, Trump is that he's nominated Andrew Puzda to be Labour secretary, and Puzda just uh, his, his career is all about at uh, the American Enterprise Institute is all about extracting profits from fast food workers. Well, capitalists extract profits from all workers. That's that's what capitalism is. But the interesting thing you see about Cohen, and I, I want to point this out. <clears throat> is that uh, um, he, he, he says the same thing here. Jones and local 1999 at Carrier Corp uh, uh, were never consulted by Trump or the management. This is the problem with them, you see. They have no job if they can't sit at the table. They have no social power, their Labour leadership, no job. And so then he goes on. Now, what he did, what he did uh, 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 Cohen, is he, he was... Um, Cohen was, uh, ran the Bernie Sanders campaign. He's also the head of his revolution now that's followed uh, uh, this, the, the elections. Um, so Cohen, um, he says that, um, uh, he, I don't know, they had some sort of meeting or something where they listened to Keith Ellison and Senator Bernie Sanders and others uh, pledging to build a resistance based on mutual aid, not simply self-defense. Well, and that Sanders will introduce le legislation that makes the connection between moving work outside the country and the future bidding rights on government contracts. Sanders has been a senator forever. Sanders is a fraud. Sanders just betrayed a bunch of, uh, a lot of n young people who had illusions for the right reasons in what he might be able to do uh, uh, politically in this country. He tricked them. He's a con man. There's those progressives that have uh, uh, liberals, they call in the left wing of the Democratic Party, who mistakenly think they can make this bankers' party a workers' party, or, or, or actually they don't. They just simply think you can make capitalism nice, and you can't. Okay? You can't. Mm. So uh, uh, the, uh, he, he's, he, he puts his hope on, in Sanders. He was an advisor to Sanders. Uh, Larry Cohen was. But you see, Larry Cohen uh, is on the Democratic National Committee. 
He's, he, this is the problem, and this is where the, we're, we're talking about the team concept and the ideological bankruptcy. What it is, is the Democratic Party, is the, cap, is the means by which the capitalist class and its agents are linked to the trade union movement, to the workers' movement. Working class people built these, the trade unions. We have a heroic, rich, militant history in this country of building these organizations. There's bad parts of it and everything else, the racism, the women excluded, all of the things we know about, the negative things about it. But nevertheless, the working class built unions in this country through massive violent struggle, not us being violent, in response to their violence, the violence were turned against those people. In the South, they, they incited racism, the bosses, they forced Mexicans and black workers across picket lines of white workers at gunpoint. Uh, uh, believe me, we have, a, we have a great history. And the problem is, if you take Larry Cohen, uh, Larry Cohen's on the Democratic National Committee. I don't know what else he's done with them. But I was, as I was reading the AFL-CIO uh, website in relation to um, uh, uh, this, this hullabaloo with the, um, with, the, uh, with the Carrier Corporation, I, was, I see uh, uh, there's uh, Josh Goldstein. He is a senior press secretary of the AFL-CIO. He's talking about the need, how Trump appealed to the work, uh, a certain uh, working class people. He speak, in terms of his message, it is really resonating, uh, uh, Josh Goldstein says. If you are talking about union people, he is speaking our language. Well, he is in the relation to the false claim that the loss of manufacturing jobs is simply due to outsourcing, when overwhelmingly it's due to innovation and technology. I think about um, Michael Roberts, it, it was on our blog a week or so ago, pointed out that something like 7 million jobs have been lost manufacturing jobs in relation to, um, in, uh, with, uh, due to innovation and technology. So, so Goldstein goes on, Jeff, uh, J Josh, Josh Goldstein goes on, it is our job, we can't let that go unattended because people have been doing that with Trump for a long time and his numbers have only gone up. It is our job to go out and educate people. So, so, so it doesn't cross that threshold or become a threat. How many times have I heard that? How many times have I had that, heard that from different top labor officials or mid-level labor officials who refuse to fight for their members in a serious way, mobilize their members to confront uh, capital, to confront this offensive of capital, and, 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 and then they use the argument, well, the members are this, the members don't want to fight, the members need educating. I'll tell you how they need educating, win something for them. And that's exactly what they won't do. If, that's why they don't go to meetings. You're not going to get workers to go to a meeting to hear the same argument from the union leader they hear from the boss. If you want to educate a worker, you win something concrete for them. You improve their material lives. You don't... You don't go to the table, which is what they do now, with a program of concessions in the hope, with a, with a, a d d demands for concessions, in just slightly last, less concessions than the boss wants, in the hope that you'll come out with less concessions than the boss wants. And what happens in those negotiations then is you screw future workers, because new hires normally always get screwed in those contracts. They come on the job, they're resentful for the union, they have this hostility between those in one tier and those in another tier, weakens and undermines working class solidarity and just continues this downward spiral that we're in with the team concept where the union leadership is ideologically in bed with the team concept. So you've got uh, Cohen who's on the Democratic National Committee. This guy Nussbaum, he, he's a senior press secretary of the AFL-CIO. He worked in the office of Senator Edward Kennedy and of Congressman, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. They're all at it, you see. A lot of these people are at it. Some of them come out the big universities. They sit on the compet which are capitalist institutions. They sit on the co uh, competitive councils, on the economic councils, uh, 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 with, um, with, 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 uh, um, with big uh, um, representatives of industry and what have you. So that's the, that's the crux of the matter. Yes, their salaries are obscene. Yes, it's difficult to get rid of them uh, uh, because they're not directly voted, a lot of them, although the union movement is a lot more democratic than uh, church, churches, for example, and other social institutions. Um, but that's the pr primary reason. Uh, if you take the Central Labour Council of Alameda County here, uh, the, the guy that heads that, uh, as far as I know, he used to be, as far as I know he still is, he's on the state democratic committee. So it, what it is is that the, uh, the, the, the capitalist class through its, one of its major parties is, uh, has agents 
inside our movement and in big positions inside our movement. And that's the problem that, uh, and the, that they bring with them an ideology and a consciousness that is hostile to our, uh, to our future. They, they, their view is, you got uh, Sanders, who, as I say, is a fraud. You got him, uh, I don't know much about Ellison, but he's a dem another Democrat, is that, is that what they believe and what the uh, Bernie types in the Democratic Party, not the new young people who genuinely thought this man would do anything, but those left progressives, they call themselves, left-wingers who think that they can make that party into a workers' party. Now, that it may at one time, it may at some point, there may be a left split from it. But those people ideologically whose view is that capitalism can be made to work, that the environmental crisis can be solved by capitalism, that, that the poverty can be solved, no, none of those things. We're in a different era. The American dream, not that we should ever have a dream that is one based on mass consumption, uh, uh, 3,000 square foot houses with two people in them and what have you, uh, it was any good at all. But even at its height, the American dream never uh, solved poverty uh, for its citizens and what have you. And plus, it, look at where we are now, where the American imperialism is the most destructive force on earth at the, most, at the at moment. And so that, for me, is the big problem with, um, with the trade union leadership and any opposition group that's developing that claims to put put forward uh, an alter that puts for itself forward in the labor movement there are a number of them and I've come across them when we built an opposition in AFSME we called it AFSME members for a stronger union and we selected that either fighting union or stronger union because you'll often hear uh, so we didn't want to call it AFSME members for a democratic union firstly most local unions are pretty democratic but the other thing is you're not going to mobilize people a working class people whose, who, who, whose lives are consumed with family, daycare, both working, a little bit of leisure time they got, then not, you're not going to get them to get involved in the union or in politics in general around the issue of democracy in the abstract. What they will get involved is in, and what will bring them to the union meeting and you, to the union hall is if they see that it's going to benefit their material lives. That's why the Labour leadership constantly talking about we need to educate the members. That's a con game as well. You need to win something for the members. You need to fight. And I, an example of that issue of democracy rather to, than a platform and a program and how to win it, 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 it during the Carpenters Wildcat strike here in 1999 some of my friends were involved in that and I was in a smaller way because I was in a different union is they walked off the job uh, uh, it, during a boom they got very either no or very low raise so they're on the they're on the building site they see the other trades got wet somewhat very good raises it was in 1999 they didn't get any or they got a low wage increase they also had the vote taken away from them the direct the wrote the the right to vote on their contract so they walked off the job but i'll tell you this if if the union leadership had brought back a five five dollar an hour increase in pay an increased vacation and brought back say something like back Fri black friday that they'd lost or something like that had they done that they wouldn't have walked off the job They'd have turned, they'd have talked to each other and they said, well, you know, we don't get a vote on it anymore, but damn, look what they won. They'd have let that go. That's, so the, th the thing is, that's any opposition that, it, within the, that arises within the trade union movement has to be open, has to criticize this team concept, must at the very least uh, uh, condemn the team concept. I don't know that there's one union official today that raises that. You have to con condemn the team concept. You cannot win if, you can, if you, the, your position is, I'm on the same team as the boss, because you can't mobilize the wider working class in general in our communities uh, uh, um, uh, and all other aspects of working class struggle. You can't bring them together against a person or against a group of people uh, who, who you believe is on the same team as you. It's divisive it's worker against worker and internationally it does the same thing it puts me in bed with u.s industrialists against japanese workers german workers about who's going to get laid off it's the same thing in you can't build the global solidarity necessary to drive back what is an offensive of global capital and so that's the main point i wanted to drive home today i just finally learned learned that my camera clocks off after 20 minutes uh, I'm a trial and error, error guy with this stuff, um, so um, I'm trying to figure out a way to work around that. But anyway, 
So those were a few points I just wanted to make. Um, and that's it for today. Uh, this is Richard Miller. I'm with Facts for Working People. Um, talk to you soon.